Hey guys and welcome to another tutorial here on the Coaches Legacy channel. In this video we'll take a look at how to use the Python GUI library Tkinter along with Python Pillow library, which is for images. Now you might think what do these two libraries have to do with each other? Well, basically the point of this tutorial is to tell you how you can use the Python Pillow image library to display images in the Tkinter GUI library. Now, some of you may already know about the photo image feature in Tkinter, which is used to display images, but you might be wondering why not use that to display images instead of pillow. And don't worry, we'll get to that. So let me go ahead and show you uh, both how to display images with Tkinter's native features, with Tkinter's built-in functions, and how to use it with pillow, and what are the benefits, okay? What benefits are there to using pillow over Tkinter's default functions? Let's take a look at that. So I'm going to first uh, create a label, okay? Using this label, we're going to actually display the image, okay? Because loading the image is something done using pillow or Tkinter's photo image class, okay? But the image needs to be displayed on something, on a widget, okay? And that's gonna be the label, okay? So image is equal to, we'll leave this option blank for now, okay? Or actually we'll make an empty image object here, self.image. Okay, and we'll just assign that over here. And self.label.pack, we're packing this in. All right. Now, we need to load our image, okay? The image that's actually gonna be displayed in this label, okay? Now, let's first take a look at photo image, okay? How we can use photo image to display an image in Tkinter. To use photo image, we'll do tk.photoimage and then we'll do file is equal to, and then we'll include the file path to our image over here. And if it's, in, if it's in the same directory, you can just use the file name and that'll also work, okay? You don't need to include the, file, the full file path in that case. We just code programs and pillow and then python.png. Great, now let's run this code and we should see our output, there we go. Here's our Python image file, and as you can see, it's displaying pretty nicely, okay? There isn't anything else on the screen because we only had have the label, okay? But of course, you can put in other stuff here as well. Anyways, so the thing is that why do we need pillow? If taking dot photo image is working, why do we need something else? Well, the problem is that photo image is a bit weird and not very reliable because you can see here that it's opening up a PNG file, but it's not able to open up all PNG files for some reason. Okay, I think it might be something to do with the dimensions of images or something. Maybe it just doesn't support certain features, I'm not sure. But from my experience, it's not very reliable and it doesn't actually support as many extensions as the Pillow library does, okay? Pillow is a dedicated library for image processing and image manipulation and it's like your go-to library when you want to do something related to images, okay? And the best part about it is that it's compatible with Tkinter, okay? So we don't need to do any weird nonsense, okay? So it, that's a pretty good option. Now, now, actually, let's just comment this out and let's use pillow instead, okay? From pill, okay, import. Oh, and by the way, you need to actually download this library Okay, you know, you know, pip install pillow. Okay, don't don't do pip install pill. Okay, do pip install pillow. Okay, anyways, uh, let me just type that out here. Okay, pip install pillow. Okay, anyways, so what we want to import is image and image tk. Okay, image is the standard image class in pillow. Okay, that's used to normally open up images and perform operations on them. Image TK is the class that we'll be using for Tkinter, okay? It's a special class in Pillow that's been specially created to work with Tkinter, okay? Pretty handy. Anyways, so let's see exactly what happens. Okay, and before we do, let me just make a point here. With photo image, I'm gonna try loading up some of these images, okay? We already have the python.png file loaded, so let's try to load up the other two, okay? So mcatloaf.png. Let's try to run this. 
And as you can see, it gives us an error, says it couldn't recognize the data. Okay, so yes, even though this is a PNG file, it's not working. Let's try the other one, rollover dot jpeg. And it also gives us an error, couldn't recognize the data. Okay, now let's just make our point to prove our point. Let's use pillow. Okay, and let's see whether it works with pillow or not. So what I'm going to do is pillow image and or we don't need to do this actually. Or actually, let's keep it that way. I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. There's actually a benefit to using self. Anyways, so I'm going to use image.open and here I'm going to pass in the file path. So we'll just copy this directly. Now let's copy the file path in here. And okay, the thing is we can't actually use this object yet in takeinter. We need to first convert it to a takeinter compatible object. So we'll do that using this self.image is equal to image tk dot photo image and then we'll pass in the pillow image in here. Okay? And we we just converted this image this pillow compatible image into a takeinter compatible image. And then we passed self.image in here. Okay, so if you run this, there we go. There's our image. There's our cat photo. Great. Now, this is uh, basically, we just have proof that pillow works on what uh, takeinter does not. Let's just try one more. The other one, the PNG one, loaf.png. And there we go. There's our cat image, okay, the PNG one. So that's our, per, our first point proven. Now let me just show you some other useful stuff and point out some useful advice, okay? The first thing I wanna show you is just some basic operations that you can apply, like resize, okay? You can resize it down to like 300 by 300 and you need to specify a kind of technology that you're, you're going to be using. We'll specify anti-aliasing. Okay, this is a this is pretty handy. Okay, like smoothing out the edges and stuff when changing the dimensions. So if I run this, and we should see a much smaller image, but no, we didn't. Okay, uh, I'm pretty sure because resize returns an image. Okay, it doesn't. It, I don't think it affects it in place. So if I do this. Then there we go, there's our smaller image. Okay, let me just make a slight modification. Is this the width or is this the height? I think it's the width. For, yes, the first one is usually always the width. Anyways, so over here we can see our image. Okay, and you can also see the slight padding that we apply to the edges. Okay, the pad x5, pad y5. Okay, so this is how we resize our image. And if you notice, these operations can only take place on the pillow object, okay? You can't use resize or rotate on the take into image, okay? So whatever operation you wanna apply, you need to apply it before converting it to a take into image. So one more thing that we can do is rotate. Um, let's just uh, do it that way. Dot rotate 90. Is this in place as well or, okay. We need to do it like this. If I run this now, and there's, there we go, it's rotated. Now there's obviously a lot more to pillow than what I'm showing you over here. Okay, pillow is a vast library with a whole bunch of functions. So I do advise you that if you're interested in this, then do check out our pillow tutorials and stuff. Okay, I have some useful links down in the description below. So you can find some extra material over there. Okay, some videos and web links. Okay, and that's about it for this tutorial. There is one more thing I want to mention actually. If you don't do this, if you remove the self over here, this is actually something I just remembered and something that kind of bugs me as well. Uh, there you go. You see the image just disappeared. Okay, where to go? And the reason for that is if you don't declare it as a class object, okay, if you don't declare it as a class variable, then it's going to basically be destroyed. 
is the concept of local namespaces. You know that this is a function, right? This is a function. And this right now is just a local variable. So once this function finishes executing, this local variable is gonna be destroyed. Okay? And that's the problem because then our image will get destroyed. Okay? So the way to fix this is to declare it as a class variable. And this way it won't be destroyed until our window object is destroyed, okay? Which is the object of this class, okay? I hope you understood that. And as you can see, it's gonna be working now, okay? So yeah, that, that's just the last concept that I wanted to mention. And with this, we're done with our video. And if you guys have any questions or any feedback, any tips or uh, videos that you wanna see me do, then do let me know. And I do hope you guys subscribe to the channel leave a like, leave some comments, okay, leave some feedback, all right, that's all pretty helpful and encouraging, okay, and that's about it, I hope to see you guys in a later video, that's about it, I hope to see you guys in a later video, later.